Will skateboarding ever die out? Or how long will skateboarding last? This seems like a weird question to ask, but there's no correct answer. If everything goes perfectly and skateboarding transcends all cultural and physical challenges, skateboarding could technically be around forever. That is, until our species ends. In the end, we'll all die off our skateboard in hand from a fiery explosion caused by a war, global flooding, a drought, a massive earthquake, a random asteroid colliding with Earth, or maybe aliens. Whatever it is, that will be the best case scenario for how long skateboarding will last. And it could happen in 10,000 years from now or tomorrow. You just never really know. Unless the aliens start skating too, and then skateboarding becomes a galactic sport or something. And in that case, it might last a few million years until the universe as we know it dies. But that's only if we don't have skateboarding in the afterlife. So technically, skateboarding could be eternal, right? Okay, I'm sure most of you are lost and wondering what kind of drugs I'm on right now. And that would be nothing but DMT and morphine. Uh, don't worry, you don't need to call my mother, you don't need to call the police. You actually make both those drugs in your own brain. Uh, so that's right, you do have morphine and DMT in your brain right now. So aside from those two, I'm as sober as a sleep-deprived gopher. And I bet you're wondering what that has to do with skateboarding. Nothing. Anyway, if you couldn't tell yet, this isn't a typical video, and neither is skateboarding. But to make a really long video short, skateboarding will last as long as people skate. But is that really true? If a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, did it really fall? If a person rides a skateboard and there's no one there to hear it, are they really skating? Well, yeah, because the person riding it would hear it, or they'd at least see it, or if they're blind and death like Helen Keller, they would feel the board in your legs, so yeah, they'd be skating. But all exceptions in psychology thought experiments aside, how do we determine how long something can last that anyone can do? Typically, it's how popular the thing is until it's not. An easy example for this is fidget spinners. I know it's a weird example, but just bear with me, okay? Trust me. If you go on Google Trends, a Google website that shows you how frequently a word or a phrase is searched on Google over the past 10 years or so, whatever you put it to, if you go on Google Trends and search fidget spinners, you will see a clear and defined pattern of exponentially exceeding growth and then a quick and sudden fall. I think this is a good example of how long something lasts, in this case, a internet trend. So now if you compare that search term to skateboarding, you will see that it is completely dwarfed in comparison to the popularity of fidget spinners. Kinda sad, I know, right? But wait, if you just take skateboarding and expand it to the maximum timeline, you will see something interesting. You'll see a gradual decrease with a slight increase in the past few months, which just happens to fall with the growth of my channel. Coincidence? I think not. Anyway, I tried comparing it with similar activities such as scooters, inline skating, BMX, and none of them had the same decline in searches as skateboarding. So does that mean skateboarding is dying? Well, not really. This data is a percentage of all the searches on Google that include the keyword skateboarding. Do not confuse this with the total number of searches that include the keyword, because obviously there were a lot less internet users in 2004 than there are now. But with that being said, in 2004, there was a higher percentage of internet users that were searching for skateboarding into Google than there are now. So is it fair to say that skateboarding has become less popular in the past 15 years? In my opinion, definitely not. Aside from skateboarding having a place in the 2020 Olympics before being cancelled because of you know what, in the past 15 years, skateboarding has experienced a lot of growth with the way people skate and the fashion around it, which has pretty much turned into its own thing. I think it mostly started with the swag boys back in 2010 when you had all the drip if you're wearing some fat, I'm talking PH fat, fat tongue shoes from DC. Then on top of that you just put on a diamond supply t-shirt and a bulls hat, boy you are balling up in the club on a Tuesday, know what I mean? Anyway, as much as we hate the style now, this was inspired by skaters and a lot of the brands those swag boys back then were wearing were skate brands. Skate fashion obviously evolved a lot more past that, but that's kind of where it really started. It was also back in 2010 when Street League was created, which for some of you might just be another X Games knockoff, but back then it was huge for skateboarding and featured the largest monetary prize in the history of skateboarding if you won. But that's a video for some other day. On top of all that, there are skateboarding channels on YouTube with millions of subscribers, and although they don't pull the same amount of numbers of views as some of the other niches, they don't do that bad. And over the past 20 years, skateboarding has also transcended cultures, with it being introduced to developing countries. So if anything, skateboarding right now is growing, and if it's not already, it will be a world-recognized sport thanks to the Olympics. But back to the topic of the video, will skateboarding die? Well, it's funny because technically it has before, and not once, but actually twice. The first wave lasted from the 1940s to the 1960s. 
The first skateboard started with wooden boxes or boards with roller skate wheels attached to them. The infamous crate scooters preceded skateboards. Unlike a lot of people say, they were not actually first. And the only thing they really had that was different was they just had the like wooden crate box thing attached to the front of it that acted as handlebars. So no one actually knows who made the first board, but we do know it was made by some surfers in California. It was mostly known about by local surfers until the early 60s, where a small number of the surfing manufacturers started building skateboards. It was around this time that the popularity of skateboarding began expanding. The first skateboard magazine, The Quarterly Skateboarder, was published in 1964 by John Saverson, who published the magazine and wrote his first editorial. Today's skateboarders are founders of the sport. They're pioneers. They are the first. There's no history in skateboarding. It's being made now. By you. The sport is being molded, and we believe that doing the right thing now will lead to a bright future for the sport. Already, there are storm clouds on the horizon with opponents of the sport talking about ban and restriction. Within the next two years, there is a huge increase of interest in skateboarding, and there is even the first skate competition ever held in 1965, featuring flatland freestyle and downhill racing. And it was even aired on TV on ABC's Wide World of Sports. But not long after it was in the public eye, in 1966, skateboarding was claimed as dangerous by a variety of sources, resulting in shops being reluctant to sell them and parents being reluctant to buy them. And the same quarterly skateboard magazine, later renamed The Skateboarder Magazine, had stopped production entirely. This was the first wave of skateboarding, and you could say, especially back then, that at the time, skateboarding had died. Similar to the fidget spinner, skateboarding had a quick and sudden burst of popularity before just as quickly dispersing into non-existence. But skateboarding hadn't really died in reality, because, well, I mean, we still have it today. So what happened? Well, despite the drop in popularity, the same people that started skating before everyone else was continued to skate, and in the early 70s, skateboarding changed forever. Frank Nasworthy is possibly the most underrated man in skateboarding, and he is the single man responsible with the return of skateboarding in the 70s, because he was the first to develop and sell skateboard wheels made out of polyurethane. This might not seem like a big deal, it might seem like nothing, and it might be because of this that you've probably never heard his name, but prior to this, skateboarding wheels were made out of metal or clay, a pretty much composite plastic wheel, and using polyurethane improved the traction and performance of the wheels so much that from the wheels release in 1972, skateboarding started to rise rapidly again. And by 1975, skateboarding had gained back all of the popularity it had lost in the years prior, and had the largest skateboarding competition since the 1960s, consisting of 500 competitors. It was also in 1976 that the first skate park was built in Carlsbad, coincidentally in the same city as Tony Hawk was born in. Back then it was basically just a big concrete pump track, but skateboarding was changing, and in the same year of 1976, California experienced a massive drought, and the skateboarding team known as the Z-Boys started skating in empty pools and started the beginning of vert skating. With the times, skateboarding improved, as well as the vert skaters, and they were able to skate faster and invent new tricks, such as grinds and front and back spins. During this era, flat ground skating was mostly known as freestyle, and started to splinter off and develop into a much more specialized discipline, and it wasn't as popular as vert skating. It wasn't until the mid to eight ladies that skateboarding had began to experience its decline in popularity. A large portion of the general public considered it a fad, and it just went out of style. With that, the high cost of liability of keeping skate parks open meant that skate parks had to close down, and companies went bankrupt. This was yet again another time when everyone thought skateboarding had died. But if you know anything about skateboarding, then you should know that this was one of the most important times of skateboarding history. Because freestyle skating, that had branched away from vert skating years ago, had dominated the skateboarding scene. Freestyle skating required no skate parks and was already mostly devoid of skate companies, and because of that, they remained healthy, with pioneers such as Rodney Mullen inventing many of the basic tricks that have become the foundation of modern street skating today, such as the ollie and the kickflip. This is also for yet another video, but if it was not for Rodney Mullen, we would not have street skating as we know it today. And with a few small changes throughout the years, skateboarding would continue to evolve into what we know it as today. So did skateboarding ever really die? Well, technically, yes. I mean, it died as we knew it. In the 60s it died, but when it came back, it was different. Then in the 80s and 90s when vert skating died, it never really returned. Or at least the skateboards at the time didn't return, that's for sure. Like sure, it's a great spectator sport, but how many skaters that you meet skate vert? Like for me, not that many. I'm sure a lot of skaters can skate a bowl with vertical walls, but how many do that and nothing else? Case in point. So with all that said, you could say that parts of skateboarding died, 
such as the metal wheels and the big heavy skateboards, and for most part knee pads and helmets. But overall as a concept, skateboarding never died. And it possibly never will as long as we have a desire to travel on a board with wheels. Skateboarding will definitely last. And it will probably go through some changes and rise in popularity, and it will fall and decline, but as long as there is someone still skating and someone still inspiring someone else to start, it will never truly end. And this goes really beyond skateboarding, like how long will anything last? How long until my channel dies? Sure, I've been uploading videos for about a year and a half, but whether some of you know it or not, my channel has experienced a lot of changes from the beginning, and it's only because of these changes that so many of you have decided to subscribe and join me on this journey on YouTube. I mean, after all, everyone knows that one YouTuber they used to watch, and then one day, they just stopped watching them, only to find our channel a few years later and wonder what happened. You see it everywhere on YouTube. You see it everywhere in the real world. So if there's any lesson to pull from this video, it's to stick to what you love to do and do it no matter what gets in your way. Trust me, life finds a way for people that truly want something, but sometimes it's going to test you to make sure you actually want it. This video will probably do bad in the algorithm, and I honestly don't really care, but if you are still watching this, I just want to say thank you, because it really means a lot to me when you watch to the end of the video. It's definitely not my usual type of video, so if you could leave me some feedback in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it, and if you aren't already subscribed, and you've watched this far, well, you should do it, because you probably like the video, and I also upload every single week, so make sure my channel doesn't die off by subscribing. Anyway, that's all I have for today, I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you again next week.